Hi, I'm Adrian Troy, Director of Product Management at Snowflake, and we're excited to chat with our new CEO, Sridhar Ramaswamy, and our Head of AI, Varesh Goltakin, about our exciting new release, Snowflake Arctic, which was released just last week, the most open enterprise-grade LLM in the market. Sridhar, Varesh, welcome. Thank you, Adrian. Excited to chat. Thanks, Adrian. So, Sridhar, we had a big launch last week. And since that launch, our group has received a ton of input from the community. And we wanted to take this opportunity to share those questions with you and Badesh and get the inside scoop on Snowflake Arctic. The first one is just tell us a bit about why Snowflake built an LLM and how do we think about this Snowflake Arctic LLM in the context of the broader Snowflake data platform? Thanks, Adrian. Uh, I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say AI is a truly transformational technology. And uh, uh, the impact that it's going to have on all of us, but especially in the world of data, uh, is going to be pretty profound. Why do I say that? I think pretty much for the first time since software, we now have technology that can understand what humans say or write in natural language. Um, that just like unlocks data that is in places like Snowflake to a very, very large group of people. So it is truly a democratizing technology. Of course, there's lots of other cool things like uh, can these language models decide what sort of analysis to do? Can they become agents that are acting on our behalf? Um, but that's all in the future. The impact that it can have on the data cloud is right now and it's big. This is the main reason why we even embarked on building a foundation language model, which, which, which Arctic was. Um, it was a big effort, but we knew that the impact that it was going to have on Snowflake um, was going to be big. Um, and that's why that's why we built it. This is you know the first inning. There's lots more to come in terms of how AI and Snowflake work together. Our vision very much is that you should be able to chat with any like document content that you have, for example, or you should be able to ask questions and get reliable answers from, from Snowflake. Um, the emphasis here is on reliable business grade AI um, that can be trusted um, and acts on top of the governed secure data that's in the Snowflake data cloud. This is the reason why we embarked on Arctic and this is why it's a big deal for us and for the entire community of data. That's a perfect transition, um, especially talking about the, um, the speed and efficiency of Arctic. Uh, we've heard that it was not only a very efficient model to run, um, very capable model, but also that it was built very efficiently inside Snowflake. And Badesh, I was wondering if you could maybe tell us a little bit about the story of how Snowflake Arctic came to be. Uh, absolutely, yes. We take pride in the efficiency of Arctic, um, as well as how efficiently it came together. Um, we built Arctic uh, in a you know, three-month time frame, um, and uh, only uh, with a you know, small budget, relatively small budget in the foundation model space uh, of uh, you know, $2 million. Um, this is uh, all thanks to this amazing team that built Arctic, um, and this team has built a foundational open source uh, uh, systems such as you know, Deep Speed and BLLM, and as this team uh, came together, um, uh, you know, Arctic was uh, was born. Um, I will say, um, you know, we want to put everything out there in the open and and, and work with the community. So uh, since we put out Arctic out there, uh, we've also uh, launched uh, what we call our cookbooks, uh, you know, describing how others can build Arctic, uh, you know, with the, the you know, data recipes, uh, with uh, explanations of the architecture. Uh, so that together with the community, uh, we move the ball forward. Super cool. I think that that like really open approach to development um, is is actually groundbreaking in the LLM space, and it's exciting to see Snowflake do that. Uh, in terms of capability, uh, Sridhar, another question is: Is is Arctic better than L other LLMs? What can you say about the capability of Arctic uh, in the in the world of LLMs? Uh, Adrian, you know this. Um, 
language models, the simplest applications that uh, people use them for are things like building a, uh, a chatbot, mm -hmm. uh, but on a fixed corpus of documents. Let's say you would rather have a conversation about the problem that you have with a particular product in an interactive way than search and go look for uh, documents. In other words, a, an enterprise chatbot is actually a common and powerful application of AI. Mm -hmm. Similarly, um, we hear a lot of demand from our customers for being able to talk to their data. What that really means is, um, you know, when there is data that is sitting in a like a BI dashboard, it is sort of onerous to consume it. And anytime you want a slight variation of the data, you have to go back to the analyst and ask for that. Instead, people want to be able to fluidly um, consume data. But in both of these cases, reliability is important. And what do I mean by reliability? Um, it means that when you get an answer from one of these AI applications, it better be the case that that is the right answer. Um, and so what makes language models powerful in the enterprise is yes, it's the capability of what they can do, but it's also an assurance from whoever is creating these applications um, that these models are truthful. And of course, it goes without saying that governance, making sure that the right person has access to the right data um, is also is also important. Uh, and uh, so when we developed Arctic, we said, what are the most common enterprise applications that we would want? Um, we know, for example, um, that retrieval, which powers things like chatbots is important. This is why we worked on an embedding model, which is actually you know, a different model in the same family of uh, models. We know that being able to write good SQL um, is going to be important. We know that writing writing code like Streamlit Python code is going to be important for us. And these are very much the benchmarks that we trained Arctic on, um, and it excels. It's among the best open source models uh, when it comes to these categories of um, enterprise benchmarks. As I was saying, there's lots more to do, lots more to go. Uh, you're going to hear from us. But I think this unique perspective of what makes language models useful to a business user in an enterprise context is very much the lens that we brought to Arctic. And honestly, I think this is a welcome development um, for the entire like AI language model community because mm -hmm. MMLU is great. If you are thinking of a chatbot to answer like obscure medical questions, if on the other hand, you're like, give me better access, faster access to my data, Models like Arctic are the way to go. They're inexpensive, have excellent performance when it comes to business benchmarks. And that's the mm -hmm. area that we're going to be focused on. Yeah, that's super cool to see how uh, Snowflake's uh, really enterprise focus also gives us another unique perspective on what a foundation LLM should be. So speaking of integrating into the larger Snowflake product ecosystem, uh, we know that Snowflake also launched a model garden and inference engine called Cortex. And Badesh, I'm interested to know, is Arctic going to be supported on Cortex? And maybe what else is coming down the pike? Yes, of course. Uh, so Arctic is available on Cortex uh, as of this week. So super excited about it. Um, Arctic is also available through various model gardens, uh, you know, from uh, AWS, Azure, uh, Hugging Face, and uh, NVIDIA, as well as our partners, Lemini, uh, Perplexity, Together AI, uh, Replicate, and more. Um, we will be talking more about Arctic uh, and doing a deep dive on it uh, at the uh, Data Cloud Summit uh, coming up in June. Uh, so we'd love to talk more about it then. Cool. Um, so another a byproduct of this efficiency argument you were talking about earlier, Badesh, is the question of cost. Um, I'm curious, uh, what does it mean that Arctic has, for example, greater token efficiency? Uh, does it, do we expect Arctic to be cheaper than other models uh, in model gardens? And why? Can you tell us about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so as I said, we take pride in uh, Arctic's efficiency. Um, so when it comes to training Arctic, um, we spend one eighth the training resources uh, compared to similar models. Uh, so that means when we go build uh, you know, custom models for our customers, for instance, these custom models are a lot more uh, achievable, affordable uh, to build for our customers. Um, similarly, when it comes to inference, when it comes to using these models, uh, the number of uh, active parameters is what decide what determines the cost. Uh, so Arctic has 17 billion parameters. Uh, and if you compare that to, say, Llama 3 70B, 
uh, Arctic is uh, you know close to four x uh, you know more efficient. Um, so we believe uh, you know that will that uh, translates directly to kind of the reduction in cost of using Arctic while achieving uh, you know high benchmarks uh, in enterprise tasks. That's so cool. So I'm hearing you know Snowflake uh, Arctic is efficient. Uh, it's focused on real enterprise problems available in Snowflake Cortex. Another major point that the community was asking about uh, that we talked about during the launch is this notion that Snowflake Arctic is truly open source. Sridhar, first of all, help us understand what truly open source means, if you could. And also, why did Snowflake make this move? Why, why is openness important in AI? Great question, Adrian. <laughs> um, the state of AI right now is that it's really hard to know what's going on. There are new claims, new models. Uh, you know, you don't really know what's been trained on, what they have been trained on. You often have to worry about things like contamination, uh, which is another way of saying sometimes model training data inadvertently, for example, you know, has some of the benchmarks that you're trying to evaluate the model on. Um, and all claims are on, 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 on Twitter. But the important but is the state of the world, the state of the science behind these language models is not really progressing as rapidly because all of the model makers have pretty much decided that they don't want to reveal it. It has become a situation um, where business interests prevail over um, actual sharing and even things like verification. Um, and that was one of the main reasons why we open sourced Arctic but even there, it turns out that the word open sourcing has lots of meanings. It's one thing to give the model to somebody and say like, hey, you can use this if you want. Uh, some people also do things like, you can use this uh, model if you, uh, if you want, but you have to give us your email address. Mm -hmm. And others go, you can use this model if you want, but you have to give us your email address. But if you plan to use it with more than you know, some number of users, you really have to get our permission. Um, and uh, things like what went into making the model, the recipes, the techniques, the thing that the things you know that really move the science forward have become very, very obscure. First, we think that the world will benefit from more transparency. It will result in better models. It will result in more people knowing how to build these models. It can result in people discovering that we could, we Snowflake could in fact make the process more efficient if we did something else. There is also that sort of benefit that accrues to us. We went down sort of the as much transparency as we can provide route because we thought it was important for the thousands and thousands of students and professors who, you know, let's face it, don't have the $3 million budget, but who nevertheless would like to experiment with these things tinker with either the data recipe or the model training or fine tuning. I think we move the community of AI forward um, with a move like this. Uh, and of course, we think it'll also be beneficial for us because more people will be excited about what we are doing, about the benchmarks that we are proposing for the enterprise, which by the way, we think are good benchmarks for the, uh, for the, for the enterprise. Um, it is one of these cases, it's like trade. Um, I think releasing this openly, having, you know, working with lots of partners actually makes all of us better. And that's why we were pretty excited to open source it. I think just based on the feedback that you've gotten back from the community, the number of partners we have, I would say there's already proof that this was a really good thing uh, to do. Uh, and that's why we are pretty excited about Arctic. Yeah, uh, that's, that makes perfect sense. And, you know, speaking of the community, uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to Barash and Sridhar for these really fascinating answers, uh, but also thank you to the community for these awesome questions. Uh, they're really, it's helpful for us to hear what you all want to understand better about what we're doing. And we at Snowflake are just excited to continue to innovate in the world of AI, and we can't wait to show you what we're working on. So for a first look at what Snowflake has coming down the pipe, Please join us at Snowflake Summit next month in San Francisco. Barash, Sridhar, thank you so much for your time. This is wonderful. Thank, thank you. you.